guys, my name's Steven Garcia. My favorite movie is The Godfather because I like gangster movies. And then I hear a <laughs> something called, uh, I'm gonna call Drop the Ball Syndrome. Yeah. My heart starts to pound, like, I don't know why. You like her, you have a crush on her, possibly you're in love with her. What do you do, baby? How's it going, guys? Welcome to the still newly minted Crownless Kings TV. My name's Steven, and I'm the head honcho, I guess, because I'm the only one. I'm a one-man crew. <laughs> for those of you who have been like subscribed for a long time, I know you guys have been waiting for me to drop you some content, and I've only uploaded like one in the past <laughs> six and a half months. Bruh. So I apologize for that, and. For those of you who are like care about me more than if you see me as more than just a content dispenser and you actually see me as a person you know humans have lives and we have lives outside of youtube um <laughs> i speak as if i was like i've already got like 500k subs but i don't like but i'm still a person i'm gonna talk about that in a totally different video and i'm gonna leave a link at the top right right now the important thing is we finally made it to part two and which is originally supposed to be released february 21st Bruh. the week after i uploaded part one which is the which was the day after valentine's day so <laughs> there's no excuses I, all i can say is like i'm sorry but you know i can't change what happened in the past because i don't got that i don't got those type of powers as far as like final comments before like i put this video up i thought it, this is one of my favorite videos that i've done uh it was a long process but i'm i'm just glad that um i finally got there and and I think I, I think I like how this turned out, despite all the cringe that I was doing as I was like reviewing. Before we get to the actual content, um, please hit the like button and like this video, and just hit the like so we can just get more exposure. You know, just talk about, just interact with this video, and also hit the comment section for anything you got to say regarding this video, regarding my absence. You know, talk about whatever, and make sure you're not toxic down there. Comment section below, and also if you wanna. Be a part of this family and you like what you see and you want to see more you want to get more from me hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when i come out and new stuff so without further ado this is part two of steven and the girl that got away in his high school years see you later So, after I double checked whether this slightly irregular heartbeat I had was for the sudden awakening of my subconscious feelings for Sophia, or whether because your fat is about to go on cardiac arrest, of course this box in my head was open full of questions and thoughts, mainly related to whether I had a chance with her or not, whether now is the right time, whether she's the right one, and so on and so forth. With that in mind, I called the banners within the kingdom of my subconscious, which really only had a population of two. So one of the two, we'll call him the good. Uh, I don't really know what they'll call him, or a... I don't really know, they're just figures and part of my conscience. But let's call this guy... Benjamin, I guess. Call me some slack, can't help that my imagination's as flat as Jessica Alba's performance in Fantastic Four. And the other one, we're gonna call him the enlightened one, I guess. So let's call this one... Unk... Actually, no. Uh... Kai, uh, no, 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 that's not gonna work. Uh, Drew, there you go. Droji, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, I called the banners the sovereign power of my subconscious, but none of them showed up, so I just decided to seek them instead. Benjamin? You home? Steven? Goodness me, it's been ages since you last visited. Uh, yeah. Forgive me. Oh no, no, Steven, there's nothing to forgive. Come on, food's getting cold. Let's eat. Mm. Oh sh. 
language. Benjamin, oh god, you did your, you, you outdid yourself again. Yeah, of course, I had to go all out. It's not every day you and I get to have some juicy wagged rib wise and two buckets of fried chicken, right? Anyway, I know you didn't come all this way just to come and enjoy this feast. So, Sophia, huh? Yeah, I don't really know how to put it into words. From one angle, I'm like, wow, this feels just right. But from another perspective, she's just been so far away after all, and she'll probably opt to keep it that way. I just don't know what to do, Benjamin. That's why I wanted to see where your head was at. That's really all you came for? <laughs> I'd say just talk to her. Really? Just like that? Just talk to her? Yeah. That's it. It's not helping at all, Ben. Steven, being around her feels good, right? I think that's more than a good enough reason to talk to her. So you're asking me to act out of impulse? No, I'm not asking you to be impulsive. I'm you and you're me. I know the thoughts you think and the feelings you experience. What I'm telling you is not to dive too deep into what you're feeling. Look, the deeper you dive, the more likely you'll drown. And then the next thing you know, the time and opportunity to be even a friend of Sophia, I mean, let alone her sweetheart, will pass. What if she says no? So be it. Why don't you be her friend first and see where that will go? Trust me, she won't be the last girl you come across in your life. What we... What you are will be perfect for someone one day. The deeper I dive, huh? Thanks, Ben. I think I'm seeing things a little clearer now. Yeah, no problem. You're not going to his place now, are you? I have to, Benjamin. Look, I know how you feel about him and me seeking his knowledge. It's not that I hate him. It's just that he's like a stormtrooper when it comes to advice. He misses more than he hits, if not at all. Listen, this kingdom isn't the kingdom of my subconscious if I don't include his household. Sure. And please, Steven. I can wait as long as I have to, but this household is looking for a new lady. <laughs> Alright, my friend. And please, tell me how you really feel about him. I think I'd like to stick a boot up his- Pardon me, but OG- Oh my god, that's how you do my good sir. Steven of House Garcia. Oh my god, once again, I commend you for your refusal to stoop further in your mediocrity. And oh my god, you come to the right place, you rube. Sorry, did you just call me a rube? Oh my god, yeah, I mean, you dumb as hell. So you decided to seek enlightenment, didn't you? And you've come to my keep of enlightenment. And oh my god, you come to seek wisdom of I, Georgie Sun, the all knowing professor, philosopher, master. Oh my god. And oh my god, those are questions the actions of a snake, like me, gets a kiss of death. Oh my god, oh my god. But since you've been seeking my endless wisdom, frequently as of late, I forgive you. Oh my god. Um, okay. Anyway, you know why I came to seek your counsel. You read my letter by now, right? Oh my god, yeah. So, I'm conflicted. I don't know if I should just be assertive or just take it slow. Request a drain. I don't really want to ruin- Wait. I'm sorry, did I hear you correctly? Request a trade? Oh my god, I mean, you don't really have a chance, like, at all, oh my god. Oh my god, I mean, did you gaze totally through the glass of the parallel world, like, mirror? Oh my god, shut up! How dare you interrupt? Oh no, I'm a professor for last week, master. Oh my god, as I was saying, if you look at the mirror today, you look as dumb as ugly as shark's toes. Oh my god, according to my calculations, you're about as repulsive as a devil rancher. Oh my god, according to my calculations, you smell worse than a neck rich lemon juice. Oh my god, according to my calculations, oh my god, oh my god. Ah, oh, jeez, I get it. Supposed to her, but you just said request a trade. What you mean? Oh my god, you alone, good sir Steven Garcia, will not be the favorite for Sophia. Just request a trade to another girl. Oh my god, unless you address some pressing needs in your existence, you will never reach the heights of my king- I mean, our kingdom vies for, oh my god. You, uh, 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 I mean, we will stand no chance, oh my god, oh my god. I think we have a chance though, I think she's looking at us. The Sophia is looking at us. Oh my god, she's looking within the within. Beyond your hollow eyes, she sees the car. The true is all of I, Joji-san. Oh my god, wait, what? Oh my god, 
Forget I said that last part, because I left my arms in the gym and can't fight. Hold up. Now I know what you really meant by quest to trade. You want to possess this body yourself, don't you? Oh my god, that took you long enough to figure out. I mean, you so dumb. Can you keep up? Oh my god, your critical thinking is about as flat as a flat earth we stand on. The earth is flat? Oh my god, yeah. About as flat as your mama's bosom. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now request a trade and you can watch me as I sweep Sophia off her feet. Oh my god. Oh my god, are you thinking what you're thinking right now? Oh my god, did you just call me a dumbass in your head? I mean, Drew Ojisan, all-knowing professor, philosopher, master. Ay, <sighs> jeez Louise. I'm not requesting a trade. Man, coming to this keep of enlightening is a waste of time. Why do I keep going here more frequently than Ben's place? Oh my god, it's because of my voice, isn't it? Huh? Oh my god, you came in here get laughs, because I, the mouthpiece of your cerebrum, gives you laughs when you seek not from I, the 100% truth, hiding in plain sight, oh my god. Oh my god, my voice will tickle and kick Sophie's endorphins in, if you request a trade to another vessel. And oh my god, oh Christ, what a freaking narcissist. No, I think I should just leave. Oh my god, I'm the best, because I'm a snake, I will leave you for a 73 minute time, oh my god. If I'm being honest with you, a lot of what just happened here is just an over-exaggeration of my dilemma. I mean, did you really think I hear a voice in my head like that? Who do you think I am? Randy Orton? <laughs> my conscience is perfectly clear, folks. I don't know. Is it? <laughs> anyway, as I said, I suffer from torpeitis or drop the ball syndrome. So, I gave reasons to not pursue Sophia more weight than I was supposed to. So for at least a good chunk during the beginning part of the first semester of my senior year, the only thing that was stopping me from being Sophia's boyfriend, <coughs> let alone her friend, was my own self. I came up with the stupidest reasons as to why I shouldn't talk to her. Other than some that I already said like, I'm too fat, too ugly, too uncouth, too uncool, too savage, and so on. I also reasoned that, oh, she already had that one friend in class who she already knew. And he happened to be one of her ex Scott Disick's closer friends. So I thought to myself, oh, I had no reason to get in their way. I also reasoned that, oh, this dude probably thinks I'm his peasant and creatures like me shouldn't dare speak with him. You know, some stupid thoughts like that. Stupid, I know. Eventually, however, this dude left. So, Sophie had no choice but to crawl into the warm clutches of your boy. I'm just kidding, it didn't end up being that easy. However, she did show more signs of interest in me as time went on. Now that my feelings for her have awakened, so did my love receptors. I started looking at her more often and paid more attention to her actions, at least her actions towards me. Like for example, I remember a time when me and Kevin were talking about one of our closest friends and he'd make this rubber face, or a rap face that Stevie J would do on Love and Hip Hop. Look at this dude. I tried imitating that face. Kevin and I sit at the back of the classroom, and as I was doing this face, I hear a <laughs> from the front of the classroom. That same giggle I heard when I introduced myself to the students in class. From the only girl in class, Sophia. So I thought, that was kind of odd. But as I said, I kept her actions on the back of my mind at this point. That being said, as much as my feelings develop at this point, I chose to take it easy and just be myself. And my feelings and whatever feelings she had reached each other organically. I was raised by good parents who told me to be respectful of women, as they are not just hunks of meat that we dudes just devour. They're human after all as well. So from my end, I wanted to get to know the soul slash spirit that was dwelling within that. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Scrumptious. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to get to know her as a person because at the end of the day, the soul and who we are within is the only thing that can stay young. At least if we so choose. 
Now you're probably thinking, so, what did you think? So as I said, once her ex's friend left, that gave her more reason to succeed in class, so she needed help. Fortunately, she was relatively close to some of the mutual friends we had in class, especially Kevin. She started frequenting that side of the classroom more often. At first, in my torpid mind, she'd probably talk to Kevin or one of our mutual friends in class more often, but I ended up being one of the better students slash programmers in class. And even I didn't expect myself to be that good. Yeah, okay, bud. <laughs> that is not As a correct. result, she recognized that fact, and I found myself to be the guy she interacted with the most. And I was that young man with a quiet energy that was talking to her the most. Me, Steven. The dude who thought he's not all of that in more ways than one is the dude that Sophia chose in this class. Over time, we got to know each other and we became good friends for sure. In addition to that, even I was starting to put positive pressure on myself and tell myself that, hey, maybe we can be more than just friends. As far as what I saw from her, I thought she showed indications that she was open to being more than just that. I remember a lot of instances where she showed deeper interest in me. I already told you about how she was laughing at something trivial I did, like when I introduced myself to my classmates that first day or when I was joking around with Kevin. I also remember that she made soft physical contact. No, it wasn't like she touched my thigh near my growing area or anything, what? but it was more like high fives when we got something done in class or something. Whenever we did so, I remember she briefly held my hand one time for, and for some reason I thought to myself, <laughs> Man, this hand is so sweaty. I don't know why all of you needed to know this, but it was just something I remembered about her. Another thing I recall is that she jokingly reprimanded me by nudging me whenever I was sitting next to her or and I'd do something silly or made myself look stupid. Whenever I made eye contact with her, I'd look at her brown eyes and they were dilated. I can also remember that her cheeks were also slightly flushed. As far as who she was as a person, she definitely isn't who I thought she was. Before Ashley got to know her, she gave me the impression that, hey, she probably wouldn't hang out with a plebeian like myself, and she'd probably hang rather hang out with a dude who wears Ralph Lauren or True Religions than a dude wearing Gap or Levi's and didn't even own a smartphone, because she came off from a pretty well-off family. But I was so wrong. She didn't give off the air of this princess that seeks to sit on the Iron Throne because it was her birthright and destiny, or in short, a... <laughs> She was ambitious for sure, but it's hard working about it. She was humble, reserved, and had a meekness. I thought she had some awkwardness and quirkiness about her I found endearing. The moment that I could no longer ignore my feelings was after a club meeting that she had started, which was a science club. Initially, I didn't want to go because I saw the people who were invited through the email that she sent. I feel good about myself. You know, I'm driving around in my Bentley right now. <laughs> and I'm looking at the world as they drive around in their Honda Civics. And I'm riding around a Bentley! <laughs> but I already gave her my commitment the night she sent that email because she DM'd me on Facebook just before I could go to sleep and because of probably 60% interest in her and 40% interest in the topic. I couldn't say no to her. Anyway, the club meeting was a blur, but I remember we were the last two to leave, so I walked back to the parking lot with her because we both drive to school. As far as what we talked about, I don't remember what we talked about, but all I remember was that I had a smile on my face the whole time, and I looked at her who was by my side, and a sudden rush of thoughts and feelings just went over me. I was like, wow, she's so cute, she's so beautiful. This feels kind of strange, but it feels good being around her. And if I were to pinpoint the moment where I fell in love with her, it was probably this moment. But from that point on, that was when the progress I was having with her stalled. From that point on, I dropped the ball more than Yamcha. Instead of just asking her out and letting the chips fall where they may, I let myself drown in my own doubts. Like, do I deserve to be with someone as great as she is, or that this was a rejection I'm not ready to take when it was something I really needed at such an important time in my life? I also wanted to stay friends with her because I truly did appreciate that which we had. I confided with my parents about this as well because I thought they could help me and we all say hindsight is 2020, and they were right in what they said. That whether Sophia rejects me or not, I'll still have the same problems that I'll have to deal with. The other person I really confided in was Kevin, and remember how I called him Kevin was because he pulled the snake move? 
I'll get to that. But he mostly said the same things, but was more open about it. Like, real open. Like, he'd send me some rather tempting pictures of Sophia on Messenger. But, for the most part, he gave me the same advice. That even if I get rejected, there'll be someone out there still. The nail in the coffin was the night Kevin pulled the snake move. Bigger than when Kevin Durant went to a team that won 73 of its 82 games that he blew a 3-1 lead on. So, it was about the end of May that year. My family and I were moving to Arizona in less than a month. So the pressure was on me to at least go out on one date with Sophia. I was about to send her a text asking her out on a Friday. Man, I probably could have had a heart attack with my fat ass looking back at that moment. I DM'd Kevin that I was about to send a text asking her out. Initially he was like, let's go! So I was literally about to hit send. Button was half pressed ready to send zeros and ones to the processor and send my text to Sophia. Until suddenly I hear a I look back at my laptop and see a message from Kevin. I open it and it says, wait, don't, that's cheating. For a brief moment in my mind, I was like, what What the f- What you mean that's cheating? He said, ask her out face to face when I see her the next day or something. The more I thought about it, however, I knew he was right. And I'm pretty sure he said that with good intentions. But the reason why I called this a snake move was because he probably wanted to steal her from under my nose. I mean, he had sent me messages about what he liked about her albeit on a lesser, deeper level than me, if you know what I mean. However, again, I think he told me to do it in person with my best interest at heart. But at that point, as much as I still really, really like Sophia, I was jaded on going out on a date with her. Even my mom, literally a few days before we headed out for Arizona, tried picking up the pieces and encouraged me to still ask her out. Because I guess she could tell how much I really liked her, but it was all for her. When I left June that summer, I still text to see how she was doing because I was genuinely interested to know if there was anything fun she did, <laughs> even if it was something so simple like gardening or something. By August, when I began my freshman year at ASU, I maintained minimal contact with her, if not at all. In spite of the fact that I was constantly thinking about her and could not find a girl that was as good as her. I wouldn't hit her up again for about three years though. However, by then, we had gone in different directions in life. I was the only one still holding on to the past, whatever I still had with her. But she had moved on with not only seeing other guys, but she's doing big, big things in her life, as I have watched from afar. There's still a part of me that believes that maybe one day we'll cross paths again. But as time has passed, what I had experienced that year with her is becoming nothing but a very good memory and learning period in my life. There's a small part of me that still compares a girl that caught my interest with her, but it's become clear that instead of looking for the next Sophia, I should be looking for the next girl, because not every girl isn't going to be like that girl I met my senior year in high school. I probably dragged this story long enough, so I'll just conclude with this. Bruh. If there is something that lights some fire within you, whether it's a girl or whatever, don't be afraid to pursue it. Don't dwell too much on anything like doubt or lingering questions because before you know it you'll drown and you'll extinguish that fire. If you feel like you're not ready or it isn't the right time, Screw it, and don't think about it. Instead, think about why you love whoever or whatever it is that you love. Focus and prepare for what you can do. And when the moment comes to take action, you'll have nothing to worry about. The many great things that happen in our lives happen at the most random times. So we don't have any reason to wait for THE right time. Unless you're my future son, and you get a girl pregnant for marriage. I swear I'll cut your butt. I'm just kidding lady, you know I love you. So if you've reached this point of the video, I commend you for putting up through all that, including the cringy voice acting and the cringy visuals that you're seeing um, unconsciously from stuff that I just say or just thought. <laughs> as far as like final comments regarding this whole story and this whole like saga, <laughs> it ain't even that because it's only two parts, but I almost didn't want to upload this video because for me, I was just super cringe as I, as I was editing everything and also, I was cringing for Sophia because if she sees I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I don't want it. So like this. It's almost like a confession because, yeah, it's almost like a confession kind of because I lay out like a lot of like my feelings. And I haven't laid everything out, but if I was going to lay everything out, it'd be like between us. 
if that ever happens. Also, I learned a lot in the six and a half months regarding any information related to this story. So I'm like, should I really upload this video? And also like with Kevin, I portray him like I sing, ah, oh, he's a snake. Like I repeatedly say, ah, oh, I call him Kevin because he, he pulled the snake move on me, blah, blah, blah. He might see this video and he's probably gonna be like, oh, you've been portraying me as a snake. When I repeatedly said, nah, you're not bro. Whatever happens, we'll talk it out. We, we'll work it out. Finally, you've made it here. Um, Thank you guys for getting through this video. And one more time, I hope that you guys hit that like button. Also hit the comment section below for anything you gotta say, whether you were cringing about this story and whether you wanna freaking crucify me for being out the six and a half months for not uploading enough content and all of that. So also uh, I greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and be a part of this family because we need more family members and I want I want a silver button by the end of this year. All right, you got it? So you better share this. <laughs> nah, I'm just joshing. Um, yeah, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when I upload new stuff. Thank you for putting up with me and this is going to do it for this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.